Hey, hey, Movie Maniacs, my name is Sky, and I'm joined today by my brother Dusty talking about an awesome classic movie we grew up with, watched dozens of times, My Blue Heaven. Dust, what did you think about this final, you know, you're in your 40s now, rewatching of My Blue Heaven? It, it really brings me back to lots of memories of watching this movie and seeing Martin Short and um, uh, Rick Moranis you mean- playing together. Martin Short, sorry, Steve Martin. There, okay. there you go, <laughs> the same name. But uh, they are so much, they are so fun together, and they're great actors. No, I really, really enjoyed it. But Sky, I got to ask you a question: mm-hmm. How many girlfriends did you break up because of Halloween? You were so pressured with Halloween, and you didn't know what to go as, and so you just you just decided to break up with a girlfriend. Dozens, man. Once every year, at least since I was thirteen. <laughs> every year. Oh man, I can't. Do- if you guys didn't watch it. It's absolutely a part of the movie where <laughs> I'm not going to explain it, but it's just funny because it's like, uh, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no, not at all. And if you are listening to this and you haven't seen My Blue Heaven, I cannot recommend it enough if you love Steve Martin, Rick Moranis, or if you just kind of like them, but you enjoy just 80s comedies in general, you cannot miss this one. You're going to be spoiled up the wazoo by listening to us. It deserves your watching before you're listening to this one. So I, I take it you're going to give it an A. Oh, 100%. Without a doubt, N.A. I love it. Love it. What about you? Yeah, I'm definitely giving an A. It's, I think it even creeps into A+, plus just because I could watch it over and over again. It's so funny, clever, too. So many good things in there. And, you know, this podcast and this video um, are for our YouTube channel. It's called Watch and Learn Podcast. And there's so many lessons throughout this whole entire thing. In fact, Vinny is literally teaching the entire time. I mean, even like at the very, very end, when it's like going to be over, he says, all right, guys, when you lay the sod, remember, green side up. Green <laughs> side up. You're like, oh, my goodness. Thanks for reminding me. Green side up on yeah. the sod. But, yeah, you're learning all throughout the entire movie. But it's hilarious. And uh, the acting was terrific. It was really fun. For sure, it was. And I watched it with my wife, Denise. The boys weren't interested in it, you know, when I told them what the story was about and stuff. They were playing their video games. But Denise, at the time, when I told her about it, she did not remember it at all. Started watching it. Oh, and she remembered it. She got into it. She probably watched it once when she was 15, like, you know, so many years ago. Hard to remember if if you weren't into it like you and I were. But from moment one, I remembered so many different quotes. I remembered what scenes were coming next. I was looking forward to specific scenes as the movie was progressing. You know, it really did bring back that feeling of nostalgia that we like when we when we watch all these fun old movies. And so for everybody who saw the YouTube um, thumbnail, you saw me holding up this sock. Sky, why would you, why would I be holding up a sock like this? I really couldn't figure oh, that one out. It's man. blue with reindeers on it. <laughs> no, well, it's basically just a sock. But the oh. reason why I brought it up <laughs> and it, for some reason, I always remember it when Vinny escapes from um, uh, Barney in the airport and then the next thing you see he's at the tailor and he's Vinny's getting his suit and then he puts looks over at Barney and he says to the tailor you know look at him he's all oh this is tragic and then he goes where do you see this and he pulls up his pant leg and he shows his socks and he goes oh the worst and the uh, Barney goes it's just a pair of socks. And I'm like, oh, that's a big lesson for me. You got to have good socks. So for me, my socks, if you haven't seen this, go to watchandlearnpodcast.com forward slash YouTube. And here's my sock that I love to wear. It has reindeer or deer on it. And so it's just fun. And so you have to, that's my first lesson. You have to have good socks no matter what. And I learned it from this movie. Like socks, you don't just kind of skimp on them and just get any junky pair of socks. You got to get good socks. Yeah, for sure you do. And it's always funny when I see somebody wearing flip-flops or Tevas and socks together. Oh, that is that's weird. a weird combo. That's weird. Or when you have like the 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 dark colored dress clothes like Barney had, but the white socks, you're totally <laughs> screwing up right <laughs> there, totally buddy. Are. It's so noticeable. It's so glaring. It, it's just an obvious that you do not have a passion for fashion, buddy. It, it's, it's almost like they are literally punching me in the face. <laughs> when I see yep. that, it's like, oh, you just hit me in the face, dude. Don't do mm-hmm. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You are such an eyesore. You need to get out of here for sure. <laughs> Leave the office, go to Mervin's, buy some socks. <laughs> so the progression of this movie is so fun. And you somewhat see Vinny change. Like towards the end, you definitely see him. He's much more, um, uh, he gets into his back, in, you know, his line of work of being, uh, uh, running a crime, crime syndicate. And then he stays in it. But then at the very end, he starts to be a little more, 
um, realizing that you know, there's other ways as well as, you know, he's trying to be helpful as opposed to being de detriment. Uh, and so seeing the story arc of the char main character, Vinny, is fun. But you also see so many other people change and grow throughout this entire movie. I know you really appreciate changing and growing of characters. I always do, and I really like seeing not only does uh, does Vinny, like you said, but Barney, uh, Rick Moranis' character, he grows from straight-laced, all-schedule, all-process kind of guy to being capable of lying, having fun, dancing, uh, telling jokes at the office, that kind of stuff. I mean, you get a sense that he grew just from his relationship with Vinny, being around Vinny all the time. So, Sky, you and I are brothers, and we would think of... You know, there's a funny one and then the serious one. So which one of us is the serious one? Which one of us is the funny one? I am the serious one for sure. What? No, you're not. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so I can, I wouldn't say I can be serious. I just know when to turn off and on the funniness. And uh, But at the same time, you know when to turn on the funniness. It's more of like, you know, you're more the serious one, but you know, hey, I got to be funny now or I got to enjoy. And, and, and But it's just a part of life. You grow yeah. and you adapt and you, hey, this person is uh, needs me to be funny or, you know, this is situation needs me to be funny or serious or whatever it might be. But you just grow and adapt. But when she said that, I, it was always funny to me. Um, when she assumed that he was a serious one. He's like, no, I'm the funny one. <laughs> yeah, that's like, oh, good. <laughs> for sure. And then speaking of her, Hannah Stubbs is the character. Joan Cusack, love Joan Cusack. And uh, anytime I see her in any movie, and at the very beginning, when you see her her name come up in the credits, I'm, Joan Cusack, this is awesome. Looking forward to it. But she also grows as a character. She's a really uptight, straight-laced mom as well. And she grew just becomes a little bit looser and stuff. She finally dances and... I, I don't know. I just, I really liked her growth as a character as well. This is the first time I actually ever saw her in, or remember her in any movie. Hmm. How about you? Did oh. you, did you know of her? Any you mean a movie movies? before this? Before, like we, when we watched this, when we were young, I just never knew her as a, as an actress. So when I saw it, I was like, okay, she's just a normal actress. Now we come to know her as Joan Cusack, but did you, I, I just have never seen it before, before that. I'd have to think about it. I could look back through her IMDb oh, no and see what she did before 1990. But yeah, this is probably one of the first times. And the first time that she was like a noticeable, memorable character. Yeah. A lot of her roles are really small. She's always good, but they're really small little filler roles. This one, she actually took a pretty big role in the movie. Yeah, yeah. And so I like the way that the storytelling is. It's coming from Vinny's perspective. And you have the little cut-in screens where it's like the um, uh, the words, like the old like, I don't know, 1800s pictures where they would actually have the words of what's going on, like what the character is saying rather than the character actually saying it. Um, so that was really fun, just watching it from Vinny's perspective. And it's basically you're just following along in his life. And it's really, it's it's fun in a somewhat, th this would normally have been a very, very serious situation where somebody's testifying against somebody else because we know I, I'm not going to get political, at least as best as I can, I'm not going to. If somebody has any dirt on somebody else, especially some political families, they literally get suicided. So it just happens. And so it's not as fun as the way this movie portrays it. Like if you're going to go uh, uh, testify against um, some bad people, you're not going to want to make a scene. You're not going to want to let everybody know that you're there because you're going to get killed. That's just literally how it works. But uh, it was a fun, hard, lighthearted way of playing on this um, idea of witness protection and then trying to, you know, do the right thing towards the end. It's, it's fun. And the storytelling throughout is really fun. 100% agree with you there. And the interesting thing is, I guess the, the, the subject matter of him testifying to somebody else, killing somebody, it is kind of dark. Right. And I think they purposely in editing, they edited some stuff and, and changed some of the words. Like at one point, Vinny says Fangul, but what does that mean? He probably said the F word, you know? And then when she when he goes, my name is Todd, that's a Sicilian for extra special. I'm sure he said uh, Big Dong or something else instead, you know? <laughs> but maybe test audiences felt like this is a fun, lighthearted thing, but some of the stuff Vinny says is just a little bit too... I don't know, risque or dark or whatever. So it seems like in editing, they changed that. And I like just the overall tone of the movie. It is mafia-related murder stuff, but still just fun throughout. And 
you said there was a lot of laugh, laugh moments to laugh, a lot of comedy, and there is. I didn't have any really big laugh out loud guffawing kind of moments. It was a lot more subtle, conversational, and some small situational type humor, which I really did enjoy uh, all of that as well. Yeah, it wasn't like um, a let's say Dumb and Dumber or Team America or something like where you're literally laughing. Yeah, it's hysterically because it's just so funny, but you just are entertained throughout the entire movie. And so I watched this with my wife, Melissa, um, and probably a year or two ago, she really enjoyed it. And then I was watching it again because we were doing uh, this episode and she was doing stuff around the house and she saw me watching and she sat down and like, oh, I want to watch it too. I'm like, oh, good. I'm glad she enjoys it because it's not like, you know, like the three amigos, guys like us and Spaceballs, we love those types of movies because they're hilarious. Um, our wives, not so much necessarily, but something like this, which is fun, intellectually funny as well, um, and they just really enjoy it. So yeah, I think all around, it's a it's a fun fun movie. And plus, my kids uh, really enjoy it too. They really like the movie. Good, good. I liked uh, some of the aspects of like Vinny. Uh, he is so set. I shouldn't say set in his ways. How is a mafia guy ever going to really fit in in suburban wherever they are? You know what I mean? I mean, they drove to Reno, so maybe they're in California or something. I mean, they're, they're, they've got to be pretty close to it. But how could he fit in? I mean, you see he walks out of his house wearing suits, goes to grocery stores, looking all snazzy and well, stuff. Well, you know it was I mean, San Diego, right? Oh, was it? I, I didn't know. Oh, of course, the Padres. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So You're it's right. a su- little small suburb of San Diego. Mm, and that's right. I totally forgot. Freiburg, I remember the name, but yeah. Is that an actual city? I just kind of... I have no idea. Okay, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know either. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, so in San Diego, and I could totally see that. Like, if you take me, I'm just, you know, a normal guy, um, normal city. If you take me and put me in New York, I'm just looking, I'm like, oh, I hate this place. Like, I literally yeah. hate th- too many people on top of me. Like, literally, there's a skyscraper above me. There's... A thousand or two thousand people in the skyscraper. There's too many people, and so think of the opposite, where somebody grew up literally in that environment. They'd come out. Oh, there's not enough people here. There's too much, you know, green stuff or whatever. You know, however he feels. But I could see where he's used to being around so many people, and then all of a sudden he's all completely alone. It's just like, oh, it's like a crash, and you're like, all of a sudden, oh my goodness, what's going on? And yeah, it really they told the story well. I think of him going through this and then now he's living and thriving in san diego yeah the i agree with you and then at one point in the movie he's in that deposition or whatever in court and he says it might seem nice on the outside but for a guy like me who grew up in new york 24 7 city yeah now it's a living hell that he's in you know so he's not being testifying for the money or for the life 100 percent um so i love that oh one thing i love too is barney cooper smith's partner i i mean they kind of end up being partners undercover i i love his fun dance scenes and, and just seeing him on screen kind of like a goofy fbi guy uh how could he ever become an fbi agent this guy you know he's more like the janitor uh kind of kind of a, a personality but i thought he was great in the movie I always loved seeing him brings yeah. a smile yeah he did well he was in the how the grinch stole, stole christmas the actual one from um howard um uh, uh, ron howard um, he was the dad in, in that movie. And I always remember him seeing him in How the Grinch Stole Christmas. I was like, oh, he was in My Blue Heaven. And yeah, so he's, he's um, he, he played in that as well. He was the dad? Yeah. He was Cindy Lou Who's dad. Wow. Yep. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, the, the dancing was really, really fun. And in fact, so I have been taking my wife for the last maybe 12, eh, 10 months now dancing learning how to dance, doing a bunch of different dances. I found that I'm pretty good at the hustle, or at least that one clicks in my brain. I didn't have to like force myself to learn something like that. There are so many other dances that I have to literally, like my brain is like short circuiting when I'm doing like um, salsa or something like, oh, this is just, uh, or tango. It's just, oh, it's, my brain's not working right. But it has, hustle works out really well. But one that I really like is merengue. And the reason why it's like boom, 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 boom. It's just a, all, all you literally need to do is just step with the beat. And you know, it's dun, 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 dun. It's just over and over again. And then you just move around. And so it's almost like you can't mess it up because as long as you're just stepping on every single beat, as opposed to there's like, you can make a box and a waltz or tango, you got to go forward and then right and all that sort of stuff. This is literally just step, 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 step. Really, really fun. And then almost emulating like oh hey steve martin did this move and so i'd grab my wife and we'd do that move and oh there, there. but not like the one where you know she's like spinning around and all that sort of stuff but anyways 
It's really, really fun to do dancing. So I personally would never, literally never have gone to learn dance. Like that's nowhere in my vocabulary of like words that would go into my brain of this is what I would do. But because my wife really wanted to do it, we've been doing it. And only because I'm doing it with her. If I was doing it with anybody else, I'd be like, this is stupid. I'm not going to do it anymore. But I really thoroughly enjoy it for her. But here's the funny thing. I realized, man, I'm old. Like, I'm I, obviously, I'm 41 now, so I'm definitely old. But I was thinking, man, old people say things like that. Yeah, you should go dancing as a couple. I was like, oh, man, <laughs> I'm old and I'm dancing as a couple. But that's fun. And especially if you're in a situation like, you know, in, in New York and you're they're playing the merengue, you can get up and dance. So I, I strongly think everybody should learn how to dance with their spouse. For sure. That is that is a good fun activity, 100 percent. But do they play the merengue song from this movie when you're learning? There's a ton of different merengue songs. Like mm -hmm. I always thought this was the merengue song. Like this is what it's <laughs> called. It's called the merengue. That's what this was. But no, there's tons and tons of them. So no, they haven't played this one. But whenever I dance with Melissa, I put this one on because Good. it, yeah, it really, it's a great song. I mean, it's a really fun, high energy, upbeat, energetic uh, song that really just makes you want to get up and dance. For sure, it does, for sure. Now, you mentioned the mer merengue. That's my favorite scene when uh, Barney and Todd are dancing to this one with the two girls. And that leads into my second favorite scene when he goes to the officer, police officer, whatever, law enforcement party with Joan Cusack's character and dances with her. Those are my two, like, one and two uh, favorite scenes in the movie. Just have so much fun watching them. Watching Barney just kind of grow and take on something new and then watching Joan Cusack's character, Hannah, take on something new as well. I'd say that those two are definitely just fantastic things to watch. Um, I watch those, like when we, my wife and I dance, we'll put that on YouTube, you know, because there's mm -hmm. actually, if you just type in merengue, my blue heaven or something like that, um, this will come up and it'll actually play those back to back. And so we'll dance to to those scenes. They're really, really fun. So I would say probably my favorite scene is that first, first dance scene. And the second one's good, but the first one is really, really fun because he's learning, you know, something new, look him in the eyes, all that sort of stuff. Just like, like I said, Vinny's always teaching. He's always teaching you how to do something. May he, he thinks he knows everything that's right. So he's teaching it. I'm not saying it's wrong yeah. or anything, but that's just the way he is. He's a, he's a teacher. That's the way he does it. For sure it is. Um, and um, one of the things I want to get to is my first lesson is you are the company that you keep. And you kind of alluded to this talking about how, you know, uh, Barney is a character change. But in general, like he was hanging out with Vinny the entire time. He started to become Vinny because he spends so much time with him. And he probably also sees the benefits in the way Vinny approaches the world and approaches things, you know. So uh, there's just that's a good life lesson. If you want to be successful, try to hang around successful people. If you want to be, I don't know, dope smoking, drinking loser, hang around with dope smoking, drinking losers, you know. <laughs> and I think it's also the flip of that where Vinny is around Barney and Barney's rubbing off on him. So it's not just, you know, one way there, it's, it's actually both ways. And the, that's something yep. that um, it, I would say is really fun to see that because you see Vinny slowly work this out of his system and you see Barney slowly work it out, out of the system. So it's really fun. Now, let me ask you this. You were a server and obviously you worked at a restaurant as a general manager and all that sort of stuff. So, Tell me, what do you think about over tipping? Is that a good thing or is that something that, you know, from your perspective, being a server and also somebody who has tipped in the past, what are your thoughts about over tipping as Vinny thinks it's something that everybody should know about? Yeah, I think it's a good practice for sure. My standard tip is now 20% after becoming a server and being a server for so long. So 20% standard. And I just, I loved it as a server, as a bartender, of course. You appreciate it and you remember them. The, you're more likely to remember them the next time they come in. You great, you give them great service each and every time. I mean, kind of in hopes that they tip again, roughly the same percentage, you know. But they showed you that kindness the first time. You want to reciprocate might not be the right word, but you want to continually deliver good service. And so tipping helps to get that. Now, when you over tip, at the end of the meal and you never come back again, well, they're going to like it and they're going to appreciate it and hopefully they'll remember it. Um, but you're not going to experience as the tipper the benefits of that in the future. That's a good or point. Maybe you will. Maybe it just helps society in general, everybody over tipping and being more generous. Let me ask you a follow-up question. What do you think about companies that do a mandatory like 22% or 20% or even 18% like it's a mandatory thing? What are your thoughts about that? Um... 
Well, those are generally just high end places. Or if you have a party of eight or 10, they automatically put the tip on. Um, but I mean, you could just choose to not pay it. They can't do anything. They can't enforce it. So I don't care if companies do it one way or the other. Yeah. Yeah. So I, being a server, I thoroughly appreciated great tips because that's where you make your money. Like you make very little money. You're just making minimum wage. But even <clears> with that minimum wage, you, um, they deduct how much money you actually take home from your paycheck by how much you make in tips, which is rather interesting. But um, so being a server, I loved getting tips. It was great. But then I went to Europe. I went to Europe and they literally do not tip. There's no such thing as tipping over in Europe. Like what you, and also the tax is already included in the total price. So you, you pick, up, pick up an item and you see it. Oh, that's the price. I, I don't literally have to pay more. And so I got used to that. I won't say used to it because I was there only there for six weeks. But I realized, my goodness, is tipping for suckers? Like this is just sad. But so I, I'm conflicted because I'm pretty frugal and I'm thinking, man, if somebody wants 20%, like if I pay $100 for a dinner for my family, because there's six of us, $20 for them just to bring food out to me, like, I don't know if it's worth that. But, you know, I'm still wrestling with that. And then I learned from Vinny, we got to over tip. I'm like, oh, 20%, that's a lot of money. But we'll go on from that because it just it's just something that's, it's, it's wrestling with it. So I would like to know if anybody else thinks of this. So leave a comment for us. Like, what do you do on your tipping? Because I'm trying to, I'm struggling with this because my goodness, $20 for 20%, which would be out of $100 is 20 bucks. That's a lot of money to give somebody, especially if they didn't really do a whole lot. They just brought you the food. I just, it's hard for me to think. I gotcha. I gotcha. Uh, here's what you can do. Anytime you're struggling with A or B or going right or left, just pick one and go with it and don't struggle with it anymore. You're putting too much pressure on yourself thinking about that stuff, right? Oh, so my recommendation for you is just Go with 15% and be happy mm. and just move on with life. Never think about it again. Just do 15 every single time. It's almost as much pressure as figuring out what to go <laughs> as in Halloween. That's it's right. It's almost That's right. as much <laughs> pressure as that. Yep. So what was your first life? I, I think, did you already mention a life lesson earlier? I probably did, but I actually wrote down yeah. seven of them. So Holy obviously cow. a big one, I, I, I could quickly go through all of them, but um, green side up on the saw. That's one. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's, oh, shoot, that's a good life lesson. I mean, I'm glad he said that. We probably would not have known that. Yep. One big one that I really like is look for opportunities everywhere. There are opportunities literally everywhere. And people who don't understand that an opportunity can't come up from anything, they, they're limiting themselves. If you just try to get outside of yourself, not saying to do something criminal, but you see Vinny, he has a big truck of these water containers, you know, these... They're probably what, like five bucks each. So he probably, I don't know, a thousand dollars in that entire truck. So it's like, oh, this is just, what do we do with these? He comes up with a good opportunity. Obviously it was originally for nefarious, you know, just to make money. Um, but realized it actually helped him out in the end. And long story short, he found an opportunity. So in everything, not saying to do something criminally, but there are opportunities everywhere. As long as you keep looking for the opportunity, you trip, you keep trying to figure out like, get, you know, there's an old saying, um, you know, you want to get out of the box, like think outside the box, like don't confine yourself into a box that keeps you into your own thinking. There are so many things outside of it, what you know, and you just need to be looking and talking to other people and trying to figure it out. So look for opportunities everywhere. 100% love that lesson. My second life lesson is why make war? And it's something that Vinny said, and I absolutely love this. Be kind, be gentle, be caring, be courteous to everybody else. Don't look for confrontations. Don't be a Karen fighting about wearing a mask. You know, just wear the mask or just don't shop there. Uh, let bygones be bygones. Don't burn bridges. Just in general, make love, not war. But I, I like Vinny's way of saying why make war. That's a great point. So I was working out at the gym, like literally at the gym where um, it's the <clears throat> CDC or the government saying, okay, you should wear a mask. Like you're, you, you, you must wear a mask when you're working out. I'm like, I'm literally working out. Stopping myself from breathing is not smart. Anyways, I was in the gym, I was talking to somebody else and this other guy was not wearing a mask. And so he and I were talking, I said, you know what? I, I don't wear a mask. And anyways, we were in a conversation and I was walking away. Apparently some guy was dropping eaves and he mumbled something under, under his breath. And he, basically I me and the other guy and didn't really address me. I literally could have, because it was about not wearing a mask. I could have stopped and like made war with him. I was like, I don't even, I'm not even give you the time of day, dude. Like I don't, it doesn't bother me. You can think what I didn't say this. Cause I just literally just walked and kept going. Yeah. It's like, 
why make war? It's like, it's so much easier just to walk away. My pride's not hurt. I don't have a huge pride where I'm like, oh, I gotta go back and, you know, prove this, that, whatever. Dude, that's your issues. I'm moving on. Exactly. So cool. my next tip, and I got a bunch of them, or my next lesson. So a big one is having leverage on other people. Now, this can be negative. You can take it negatively, but you could also possibly take it in a good way. When <laughs> Vinny was going to, uh, they, they pulled Vinny over from driving his car too fast, and they found the fish, he found the books and all that sort of stuff. Um, he turned it around on the district DA, um, Hannah, turned around on her like, oh, he did this, he did this. And all of a sudden, Vinny says, how's the turtle, Mrs. Stebbs? And so he, he had leverage on it because she's like, oh, uh, uh, uh. I don't want the kids to know that I did this. And so he's figuring out ways to have leverage on other people. Now, obviously, that was in a somewhat negative way. But when I'm thinking of leverage, it's just always understand people. It's just so that if there's something that you could either help them with, like, hey, they have this, or if they're literally a bad person, if you have leverage on them. I'm not sure how that would actually play out. I just thought it was funny. He just all of a sudden said, how's this turtle? <laughs> that was yep. really good. So For let me sure. give you a couple other ones. Um, another one, obviously don't skimp on your socks. That was a big one. We already covered that, but here's a really good one. And like I said, Vinny's always giving tips and lessons. He says, it's very hard for a person to change. You have to change from the outside in sometimes. That's when Barney's getting his clothes. And honestly, it's actually pretty, it's, it's really spot on. Like if you on the inside don't feel good, if you make yourself get out of bed, if you make yourself take a shower, brush your teeth, comb your hair, put on nice clothes, and then just get out of the house. If you make yourself change from the outside, your outside will eventually seep into the inside because you're forcing yourself to do that. If you're just laying in the bed, all, you know, pajamas and groveling and all that sort of stuff, it's going to be very hard to change. If you force yourself to do things to make yourself change, it's going to be so much easier to actually change. So getting a suit was a great thing for him. The last one that I had was... Never take your wallet out in a ballpark. So I literally carry a money clip now. And the money clip, I barely have, I don't know, 50 bucks in cash and um, a couple credit cards. That's basically it. I don't carry anything else. Everything else is in the safe because I realize I don't need anything else. So those are all my lessons. I, I, there's so many more, but those are the ones I wrote down. That, that last lesson, I love that lesson, <clears throat> but it reminds me of something. There are certain countries like Brazil, they tell you before you go, bring a fake wallet, bring a fake cell phone. Well, no, the life lesson there is don't go to Brazil. <laughs> if I need to have a fake wallet because I can expect to be pet my pocket picked 100% of the time and a fake phone, why would I even go there? Sure, it's beautiful. Hawaii is beautiful. The Grand Canyon is beautiful. And I don't really have much worry about getting pickpocketed there. I'd rather go to those places. I agree. <laughs> it's a, a bigger lesson. You're like, you know what? Let me boil that lesson down to bring in a you know, different cell phone. Well... Why even go? <laughs> this is like a smarter way to think about it. Exactly. Yep. So, Dust, um, oh, um, prop. I really want, Vinny, at the very end, you see the baseball team kind of in a similar theme. Lovely white suit, red shirt, gold tie. It looked. It just looked amazing when he came out in, on the field with that. I would love to have that in a in like nice lucite case right here next to me. I, You know what? That's Out of all, everything, that's the only thing I could think of. That would, other than like the water bottle with the tape on there, you know, you know, for that people pr would probably rem remember that, but it's not as appealing. If you had mm -hmm. that, like literally like a mannequin or even a life size version of Steve Martin and have him wearing it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really good. Yeah, yeah. I, that, that's the only thing I could think of is having that suit. Yeah, yeah, that's what um, I also like that initial he had like an initial metallic gray kind of suit. It was a pretty good one, too, at the very beginning of the movie. Oh, also, another lesson I'm going to give you is if if you're trying to learn something and you want to read a book, you got to buy many copies of it so you can read it more than once. That's because right. <laughs> once you read it once, it's used up. you got to go to it another. It is used up. <laughs> yeah, the words just kind of flutter away and they're unlegible at that point. I, yeah. I, I laughed so hard. When he said that, I was like, oh, my goodness, he's coming up with so many lies. And this is the best lie. I mean, you, yeah. <laughs> how do you think of another one? But in case I want to read it more than one. <laughs> yep. That was a good lie, man. This, it, that's an amazing excuse <laughs> for is. that one right there. <laughs> All right, Dust. So uh, anything else from My Blue Heaven? I didn't have a Monday morning quarterback. Did you have one? Oh, I did. I did. 
Um, Barney should have told Hannah where he was going. I mean, she's a DA or an assistant DA. Tell her he was he was in Freiburg undercover at the motel. It doesn't hurt. She knows to stay away. She's not going to go visit. She's not going to try to sneak in and out uh, to you, you know, for dinner one night. No, she'll stay away. And then you would have avoided that whole mess of of busting in and ruining their operation. That's a good point. Yeah. Well, at the same time, uh, so just tell him like the hotel he's staying at or what do you mean? No, no, no. Just tell her what he's doing and that he's going to be in Freiburg like that. And oh, that undercover might have, in Freiburg. Undercover in Freiburg. Yeah. Got it. And maybe, you know, that it was like, like busting a fencing ring or whatever, whatever it was, you know, then, then she would have put two and two together, realized that he was talking about Barney and not have followed through and done that whole thing. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, so I didn't really have a Monday morning quarterback. I was in, entertained too much throughout this. Cool, the yeah. one. Gotcha. Good, good. So um, let me see here. This was your choice, right? Yep. Okay. So next week, I want to learn from something I've had on my list to hit for a really long time. We haven't gotten to it. I want to do weird science. Oh, yeah. Chet is one of my favorite characters ever. I mean, you wouldn't yep. want him as a big brother. I'm glad you were not like Chet. But he's just so fun. And then we see him turn into that big blob thing. It reminds me of Pizza the Hut. I was like, oh, yeah. this is good. <laughs> Absolutely. So that'll be a fun one. Weird science next week, everybody. So thank you very much for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please share it with a friend. We want the, the, we want the word on the show to spread. Word of mouth is the best way to grow. Send them to the show notes page watchandlearnpodcast.com slash my blue heaven and go there for yourself to let us know your own life lessons your money morning quarterback a better prop than my white and gold suit of course as well all righty once again everybody my name was sky and i'm dusty and we will return next week with weird science <laughs> <laughs>